Hi, this is Chris Holman speaking. In this video, I will scrutinize the current reality tree and suggest correction and improvement in the logical thinking process way. A current reality tree is not only about linking undesirable effects together. The cause and effect relationship based on sufficiency logic must be sound. As a reminder, Sufficiency logic implies that the existence of A is sufficient to cause B to exist. The test reads, if A, then B. I found this short current reality tree on a blog post on the internet. It was given as an example by someone who had just discovered the current reality tree and had some reading about building them. The current reality tree builds from top down, but reads from bottom to top. Let's read the tree and check its logical robustness. If service desk agents don't know how to manage incidents, then there is a very high turnover of service desk staff. Does this make sense? Is the ignorance of service desk agents really the cause of their leaving? It seems we have a cause and effect reversal here. If we swap A and B, it reads, if there is a very high turnover of service desk staff, then service desk agents don't know how to manage incidents. It makes more sense this way, but still is not satisfactory. The turnover alone may not be sufficient to cause the agent's ignorance about managing incidents. We can assume that high turnover combines with a need for training of newcomers and the lack of time or available coaches to deliver the training. So let's try. If there is a very high turnover of service desk staff and new service desk agents need training on how to manage incidents and there is no time to train new service desk agents on how to manage incidents, then service desk agents don't know how to manage incidents. Now we understand how several events combine to produce an effect. We don't know about the reality and we can only assume the additional causes to be true. In reality, we would ask someone knowledgeable to give us the reason we are looking for. You may wonder why I do not keep the arrow between the high turnover entity and the many incidents one. Well, the cause and effect relationship is already established through the don't know how to manage. Therefore, a direct link is unnecessary. Furthermore, we can argue that this direct link is a long arrow or leap of logic as it skips the steps in between. If we read if there is a very high turnover of service desk staff, then many incidents are poorly managed. We feel that there is probably a connection, but some explanation is missing to establish the sufficiency relationship. Next, I have a clarity reservation about the verb identify. If we read, if we identify very few problems, then there are a lot of repeat incidents. It sounds somewhat strange. I presume the meaning here was eradicate more than identify. If we replace identify with eradicate, the reading, if we eradicate very few problems, then there are a lot of repeat incidents, makes more sense. The next question is about the end connector. Do we need many incidents are poorly managed? and we eradicate very few problems to have lots of repeat incidents? Not really. We are here again facing a long arrow. The fact that many incidents are poorly managed suggests that some repeat incidents will happen, but the direct causal link does not exist. One step at least is missing. I suggest to add many incidents remain unsolved. The cause and effect relationship reading, if many incidents are poorly managed, then many incidents remain unsolved, is valid. And from here, we can state that if many incidents remain unsolved, then there are a lot of repeat incidents. The ellipse tying the many incidents remaining unsolved and very few problems eradicated should be removed 
as each of those causes can lead to the effect of having lots of repeat incidents. One does not absolutely need the other to cause the effect. The red arrow is a link that is in the original current reality tree. Let's read it. If many incidents are poorly managed, then incidents take a long time to resolve. It is again a long arrow. We can feel there is a link, but let's try to patch it with an entity in between. If many incidents are poorly managed, then specialists can't figure out what the problem is. If specialists can't figure out what the problem is, then incidents take a long time to resolve. Now we understand why poor incident management leads to long time to resolve. We are now at the top of our tree. Two entities combine to produce the top effect, which is unhappy users. Let's read them. If incidents take a long time to resolve and there are lots of repeat incidents, then end user are unhappy with the service. On one side, we have long time to resolve and on the other, repeat incidents. It feels that there is a missing condition on the left side, like if end users expect a quick fix to their problems and incidents take a long time to resolve, then end users are unhappy with the service. On the right side also there is something missing. For instance, end user being upset by repeat unsolved incidents. This combines with an numerous incidents to also cause end users to be unhappy. Now, if we consider what can cause end users to be unhappy, there are probably other causes than those mentioned. I add one other cause, but there are many several others. The causes upsetting end users may combine their effects to some extent and contribute more or less to the end user's dissatisfaction. In order to reflect this, Bill Detmer proposes a connector which is called magnitudinal end. It has a shape of a bow tie with the letter MAG in it. As a conclusion, without going that far as uh, adding the magnitudinal end, we see that building a sound, logical, robust current reality tree is more than just connecting undesirable effects together. If the analyst escapes the chore and cut corners, chances are that people to whom he or she presents the current reality tree will not buy the content. If the audience cannot simply agree to the rationale because the logic is not sound or there are too many leaps of logic, the likelihood of not trusting the conclusion is very high. This is even more the case if someone feels under criticism and will look for ways to invalidate the current reality tree. You may visit my blog for more content on this subject. If you found some value in this tutorial, please give me a thumb up. See you soon for another video.